hopefully I think I have made it so that as people join us, they can literally just join in our meeting with us. So I appreciate you all so much for coming tonight. Um, again, if you could in the chat, if you can hear me well, can someone just type into the chat that it's coming through loud and clear because I've had a couple problems with my microphone this last week and I wanna make sure that you hear me. Not that I enjoy the sound of my voice, but I do wanna make sure you get to hear it as I, that is the main way that we're gonna be getting information tonight. So if you can hear me, oh, loud and clear. Thanks everyone so much. And Mr. Poole, thanks for coming tonight, both as a parent and a staff member, I appreciate that. All righty, so uh, for those of you who might be new joining us tonight, I know we have some new families who are joining us tonight. My name is Melissa Linder and I am the new principal of Silvercrest Elementary. So happy to be able to come to you tonight uh, virtually. I know that there are many things that um, the last 18 months has created that we are happy to get rid of, but one of the things that has been pretty awesome is that it's allowed us this opportunity to create this communication tool between home and, um, and school. And it allows us, without us, any of us having to get out of our chairs, we can just literally have this opportunity to, to sit down each week and just give you updates. As I shared last week, I'm going to try to provide one of these every week for the next several weeks until we kind of get into the, the swing of things. They're just an easy way to be able to kind of keep uh, families updated and for you to kind of hear maybe what's happening or why things are happening. Because one of the things that I have learned over the last uh, 18 or 19 months about uh, life is that the only thing that's constant is change. And so this really just gives us a great opportunity to have that regular weekly check-in and um, to, so that we can provide you with as much information and transparency as possible as we are starting the school year. So for tonight, um, <clears throat> we are going to be, uh, I just wanna review a couple of the health, key health and safety protocols and reminders for our families in what we are doing in, as partners, both at home and at school to help keep all of our staff and students safe and healthy. That's our goal is, I think we've all had our fill of online learning at home and we all wanna be back on campus all the time. So that takes the group effort. And so I, I have just a reminder of some of the things that we all tend to be doing to help make sure that happens. I'm gonna share some information um, with you kind of about the first days of school for sure and about the first week of school and just some just basic information. If you've never been to Silvercrest, I've been learning a lot of this this week too, um, as I'm learning the new school routines and community. Um, I'm going to introduce our staff and class assignments for the school year, and then we just have just a couple of a little announcements at the end. So if we think we're ready to roll, um, I think I'm just going to get started. And so I do want to talk first about what we can do to keep everyone safe and healthy at school this year. I know you're probably like, okay, we get it, but I um, will tell you that as I have been meeting, um, I want to, it's my top priority to keep everyone safe and healthy. Um, it's a big responsibility that we carry as educators right now, wanting to bring kids back to school and make sure we do that in the most amazing, healthy, safe way possible. Um, but I will also be honest and just transparent and say I've met with several families this week of students who have additional medical conditions and protocols. And it has even heightened my awareness of how just important it is that we all are working together to just be extra diligent and cautious with our safety precautions. So as I mentioned last week, there's things that we do at home and at school that really help um, set us up for the most potentially safe, healthy school experience possible. We already know it's gonna be fun. We're already excited to be back, but we wanna keep everyone safe and healthy as well. And so just the three big things at home that I wanna make sure that you're aware of and just to be, um, you know, as we're getting ready in the morning and getting things ready to go, just things, things to be aware of is first that daily screening that just like knowing what you're looking for. Um, and next week, we're going to have a presentation about that. That's a little more detailed, but knowing the things that you, that you're looking, that you should be looking for, for signs of really any illness. And, and like I said last week, this is something that many of us, we just do this naturally as our kids are getting up in the morning. We kind of look at them, we see how they're like, how they're acting, how they're feeling. We notice their coloring. We notice that, you know, like 
My son, when he was younger, I could always tell when he was stuffed up or congested. Um, so just taking the extra time, it's probably the most important step is just taking that extra time to just give our students a, just a glance over, a careful glance over in the morning on their way out the door. We don't need to interrogate them and, and ask them a hundred questions, but we wanna make sure that we're just really paying attention and being observant to how they're feeling before we leave because it is probably the biggest um, defense uh, action that we can take in keeping school really safe for everyone. And so I just wanna really encourage you to any reference on your phone uh, to just know when it's okay for uh, students to come. And it says my internet is inst unstable, but I'm at school and it's the best internet I should have. So keep your fingers crossed that, um, that this keeps going in the way that it should. Um, the other thing that I really wanna talk about is that in the event that your students aren't feeling well and they do need to stay home from school, um, we do ask our families to give the school office a call every, each morning that their student is not gonna be at school. Um, this has become especially important as we are doing more kind of monitoring of overall school health. And so um, if your student is not feeling well or if they kind of using the flow chart, you've decided that you're just not gonna take a chance and you'd rather keep them home that day, we just ask that you please call the school office by 9 a.m. each morning to let us know they won't be attending. And the other thing that I think is really important is that if you become aware that your child has been potentially exposed to any illness, I'm not just talking about the one that we talk about all the time now, I'm talking about any illness that could be potentially a health risk to anyone that you do just kind of stay in contact with us um, and let us know of that potential. Because as, like I said, I mentioned, I met with several of our families this week with students who have some underlying health conditions, where as a common cold and some other um, conditions might be minor to a lot of us, it could be pretty detrimental to some of the some of our children here at Silvercrest. So I just want to make sure we're staying transparent and that we are staying connected and making sure that we're communicating about just our overall health as a school community. The last thing I want to talk about is masks. Once again, I don't want to like um, drive this into the ground and talk about it a million times, but I've had several people ask me about it. And so I just want to make sure that I remind um, everyone that the, I think the biggest thing that we can do is to, is to talk about it a little bit and, and to set the tone for our students for the school year. I um, obviously have worked in the schools over the last two years as we've been um, enduring this. And I will say one of the biggest factors I've noticed is that the students who um, arrive at school and, and they've heard the messaging at home that, that reminds them that we might not like to wear a mask, we not be, not, not be excited to wear a mask, but we're doing it to help keep everyone safe and healthy, um, have a much easier transition onto school and into school than um, maybe the ones who hear a different messaging. And so I just wanna encourage you that I know that it's not our preferred method of operation. I know that it's not something we would likely pick out of our comfort, but because it is something that we have to do to keep everyone safe, I just want you um, to join me in setting the tone to go like, we know it, it's not our favorite thing, but we're gonna do it with a smile on our face and just get it back into learning because we're so excited to be, because it allows us to be back at school on site five days a week. So not our favorite thing, but it's like the magic key to get to come back at this point in the game. And they, may, and they may not be forever. There might be, you know, we are supposed to just have updates on when we can potentially not have to have that be a part of our daily life again. So just setting that message and that tone at home is really, really important. Um, at our school, I just wanna remind you of the things that I have tried to create this school year based on the past and based on the recommendations from the Oregon Health Authority and Oregon Department of Education. Um, all of our staff are required to do the same thing at home to really take a self inventory and to know that they feel well enough to come to school to monitor if they have any new symptoms or things they might need to be concerned about. I just chatted with staff today about how important it is that they you know, follow the same expectations as our students and our families and 
really pay attention to their health at home. Um, even up until last um, Friday, I have our enrollment has fluctuated at the school every day. Like we have students come in, we have students go out, we have students come in, we have students go out and it's never at the same grade. And so based on some changes over the last, like I said, last Friday, I made another decision. Um, I have created some blends in our classes um, this school year in an effort to try to keep our classes at a more small cohort size so that we have some pockets of bigger classes and then we have some pockets of smaller classes. So we're real, a big part of making those configurations was one out of just spacing because we're trying to keep the students spaced apart in the classroom. But the second is that we're just trying to keep those group sizes smaller and, and um, reduce exposure just overall and just for a better learning experience and um, opportunity to interact with their teacher. So uh, up until up until last week, I was still just monitoring that every day and making decisions to try to keep those classes as small as possible. Um, I have also created the marathon of lunch schedules for myself and our staff um, in order to keep our lunch sizes small, um, our lunch groups small and our recess groups smaller so that we are minimizing um, that the potential for interaction with other other groups and keeping and allowing our students uh, with those smaller groups our students can be unmasked outside when they play because there's more space for them to um, spread out we are going to be teaching them about that during the first week about what has to happen for them to be able to take a mask off if they prefer to they can keep it on as well um, but we'll be doing a lot of instruction and practice with that during the first week of school um, I've also tried to create a schedule where I minimize the transition transitions our students have to make throughout the day, either from classroom or teachers. And um, this year, instead of our teachers having to tra travel to where the students are, we were I was able to kind of create a, at the older grades a minimal transition so the, that the students travel as a group to one another space that's been cleaned and sanitized, and um, that those transitions throughout the days are are the least amount I can. Um, they'd make it as a group and it's the least amount I could make and still allow them to move a little bit. Um, each teacher has been working really hard this week and with our custodial staff to make room and seating arrangements that allow between three and six feet for students to the greatest extent possible. Um, we kind of recreate, we are in the process of creating some lessons and some activities for the first week to really teach all of our school routines, but also our health and safety protocols and to really give set students up for success and meeting those expectations. Um, I'm bringing in, I just got the okay today to order our tent and to bring in some additional out, outdoor tables so that we can provide additional spaces for meals or snack time and just a, a more places for classes to be able to go outside and, and have an outside activity opportunity. Um, and finally, we have really stayed dedicated to that individualized supply bag that each student gets to have their own supplies and their own device to minimize um, that potential exposure as well. And like I shared last week, we um, our, nest, our nurse Leslie is in high demand right now because there's a lot of people wanting her to come share with parents, but she will be joining us next week. And at that time, you can ask your questions about safe and health and safety protocols, about the decision-making tree um, for whether a student can, or a staff member can come to school and, and whatnot. She'll be here to share a little bit of information. I'll also be sending out some information in English and Spanish following this meeting um, for families that they can um, reference uh, during her presentation next week. And I ask that as we are transitioning back to school, that we all um, practice a little of channel our inner Yoda and have some patience. Um, I, it's funny, every day someone will say, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? Can we go back to doing this? And I would say, I'm gonna say, my goal is eventually, hopefully, yes, we can do all the awesome things that we were doing before. Um, I know people are eager to get back into uh, volunteering and visiting the classroom community and the school. And I want to just ask that as we transition all of our students back, remember last year we were only partially, like had part of our students on campus one day and part of our students on campus the next day, that this is a big transition for us too. And we want to make sure that everything works as smoothly in real life as it looks on paper. And so we want to really allow our kids to come and 
relearn how to be back on campus, have our teachers learn, relearn how to teach students back on campus and really get into a groove with our routine before we welcome any visitors or volunteers. And so we appreciate your patience with understanding that that might be a little bit of a transition time right here at the beginning. But as soon as I um, feel like our kids are kind of in a good spot and we feel like we have our safety and health protocols really dialed in, I am, I am happy to have people come and participate in the education process of our, of our students. So what do we need to know about the first week of school? Um, just a reminder that last spring, there were decisions made across the district to do some reconfiguration of transportation routes of start and end times, and that our students will be starting school earlier than they were used to before. And so it's created, um, I wanna tell you that both as a parent, because I'm thinking, Starting this week, if you haven't already, that new routine of maybe going to bed a little bit earlier and getting up a little bit earlier will help them get ready for um, how their routine and their schedule will be next week. Um, it also will impact a little bit of how the routine goes in the morning when students come to school because they will be getting here just a little bit earlier and I'll share more about that in a second. Um, as a reminder, on those days that we have early release, students will be done instead of at 2.30, they will be done two hours early at 12.30 um, on early release days. And I'm sorry if this is a hard adjustment for many. Um, I know that it's, it can be a challenge to coordinate everyone's schedules to get kids out of bed and eight o'clock can be kind of early for our littles, but we'll, we're just really gonna try to, um, I know I'm working on getting to bed earlier each night in response to this as well. And it will just take us a little bit of time to establish our new routine. So originally I told you that transportation routes were supposed to be posted today and they were. And if you remember just about three slides ago, the one thing I said was constant is change. Um, they were almost completely ironed out. And then it's, it's like when we create a building schedule and run it by the staff and they say, oh, did you notice that you, you know, scheduled two classes in the gym at the same time? You're like, oh, I need to make some adjustments. So. Um, our transportation had to go back and make a few adjustments to the schedule, the bus pickup and drop off schedule. And so I have been told that they, the goal is to have those up firmly by Friday, but could even be tomorrow as soon as they get it kind of finalized. I apologize for that. I know you're all waiting and you plan your life around that. So I apologize for any inconvenience that might cause you. Um, it will be available on the website. And as soon as that is up, as soon as I see it on there, I will also send it out via Parent Square. Uh, we'll just try to flood, flood the communication channels with it so that you there's no chance for you to miss it. So you get the information. Um, and just as a reminder, um, as soon as students are at the bus stop and getting onto the bus, they do need to be wearing their mask. <clears throat> Again, when we kids come in the morning, our, drop, our bus drop-offs are gonna be about, I think that we have two buses, bus 28 and 29. They will be arriving approximately seven, between 7.30 and 7.35. And then we're asking that if you are giving your student a ride to school, if they're being dropped off by a family member, that to please allow them to come a little bit later at seven, between 7.40 and 7.55. Again, like last year, the buses will drop at the paved parking lot on the far end of the building. And we will create a little um, gravel driveway here up in the front for, stu for students to be dropped off in the, in the front of the main building. And as a reminder, you know, we're gonna feel the love and patience with each other as we adjust um, to this new schedule. I know that um, you know, it'll be a busy time in the morning, people will be going to work or different places and just to be patient with each other um, as we get this new routine dialed in. And just for, um, it's the exact opposite for the end of the day, we will do our student pickup at the, right here in front of the building. Our, um, our teachers will be, um, we have a staging area back here behind the school and we're gonna be using two-way radios and things and our additional staff members to try to make that as smooth as possible. Um, once we know your faces and your cars a little bit better, like for me, this might take me a little bit, um, that, that process should be pretty, quick and pretty easy going, but we do again, see reminder number one about patience. We really appreciate um, your patience as we are getting this routine dialed in here at school. Just as a reminder, all students in Silver Falls School District get to eat breakfast and lunch for free. 
every day. And my only big encouragement about eating breakfast is that if a, once a student gets dropped off or off the bus, we're always going to say, hey, did you have breakfast? Do you need breakfast? Because we want them to be able to do that before they go out to play on, at recess. And um, that I have really, really worked to create like spaced out seating in the cafeteria to the greatest extent possible. And we'll have some outdoor seating. Once we get into our lunch routine, we'll also have some outdoor seating available for students so that we can create um, just a really safe place for our students to eat their lunches. So the first day of school, that's what everyone wants to know about. I had a little um, first grader tell me, I'll see you in six days today. And I was very excited to hear that. Um, we know that it's really important as a parent usually to get that first day of school photo. So if you're gonna do that at home, that's fantastic. If you wanted to get one at school, I have heard through the, um, the rumor fairy that there may be a display that is going to be set up in front of our school down um, on the corner of the parking lot where the Silver Crest sign is. Um, and I have even purchased some first day of school signs. So that if you forget yours, we have one here for you to borrow. We're just gonna ask that for this year, um, just out of health and safety concerns, we wanna make sure that those, um, those photos are taken outside of school at our display and our photo stop or at home um, as once we take those photos and kids say, Adios to their parents that we will have all of our staff members kind of on site to help welcome students into um, the school grounds and help them find some friends and help some 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 other students to, to be with until their teacher comes out to get them before class in the morning. So we are going to limit that to students only at this time and we appreciate your patience, but we also wanted to create a really special opportunity for you to get those first day of school photos if you um, were so inclined to do that. So hopefully that is a win-win situation for everyone and um, we appreciate your flexibility with that. We're just so excited we can take them at school this year, right? Isn't that exciting? Okay, so school supplies. We mentioned this last week and I just wanted to mention it again this week because I've had a couple of people ask me about, well, what school supplies do they need? And as a reminder at Silvercrest, Kind of the tradition is that instead of asking all of our families to go out and buy school supplies for each and every student in their in their family that we ask for a flat uh, $30 contribution to school supplies and with that money we are and with the combination of that money and um, generous donations from Silverton Connects their project apple tree project that they do and the Silvercrest boosters we have an abundance of school supplies that we are going to keep stocked here at school and that we will provide every student with their own individualized school supply to start the year. And we will continue to restock every classroom with supplies, with the supplies they need for that to keep that going for the remainder of the year. So that's where that all that money is, it's an it's we it comes in, we write a check and it goes out, and we buy school supplies, and, and that's how we work that um, all year long. So we appreciate, I hope that, that you feel that that is a um, positive alternative to having to go dig through the bins at all the stores, trying to find all the things on the list for all the different kids. And um, we just appreciate your uh, participation in that. So again, as a reminder from last week, um, also with, the, um, with everything from last year, we were able to go to one-to-one -to -one technology for all of our students. And on the first two days of school, we will be checking out devices individually to students in all of our grades. And we have a process for doing that. And then we are really gonna work as a staff for developing a really clear um, practice and policy for taking devices home safely and to, to, to home and to school and having really some clear expectations for students and families. We started kind of drafting those out today because we wanted to fit our community. And so, and our um, routines and expectations. So those, we'll be sharing more about those before next week, but we, I wanted to make sure that you knew the first week, we probably won't be sending devices home the whole first week and nor will we be requiring um, technology assignments at home during the first week, because just for that reason is that we wanted to the chance to get the kids into school, get the routine going before we add multiple layers of other routines to it. I think the district is also working on ordering some cases for us to help um, like surround it and keep those devices a little more protected in the 
uh, travel between home and school. Just a few reminders for you that um, if you don't have a student size mask, this, that those would be good things. We'll have them here on campus for students who need them and who arrive without them. I also am ordering from Amazon um, colored lanyards that are like, um, like if you read, if you use reading glasses, you know, sometimes there's like the little lanyards that keep your glasses from falling down. They have them for masks too. So I'll be ordering those and any student who wants to use one of those so that their mask, they don't drop their mask. It doesn't come off and go down the ground or in, like into the garbage can as they come in or out of recess or lunch, it hopefully will, I've seen them work pretty wonderfully in other places. So we're gonna, I'll have those available next week for students. Um, you don't have to provide those. Uh, I, do, I would like to just make a reminder that if we are gonna begin to send technology back and forth between home and school this year as a new practice, um, a backpack for every student, if they don't already have one, uh, would be a wonderful contribution. Uh, if, and uh, they will also need some shoes that they can wear when they have PE. Um, traditionally, we've had PE uniforms and our stock is kind of low right now. So for these first few weeks of school, um, especially in the older grades, if they have their PE uniform, that is preferred. If they don't have it, um, I don't want to keep them from participating in PE. So if they had to bring a change of like shorts and a t-shirt for like PE, that would be fantastic. And if any of these items on this list are a hardship for your family, or if there's something that we have scholarship and support available to be able to provide these for all students, we don't want there to be a, a, a factor in a student not participating or not having what they need at the beginning of the school year. We have a really generous community who has really um, offered some, some supports for students. So we wanna take advantage of that. So I'm sure this is the part that you've all tuned in. This is why you're here. It's not, I know it's not because of me. It's because you're excited to find out who is teaching at Silvercrest this year and what they are teaching. And I will have to say that, um, you know, I said it a little bit earlier, up until last Friday, I was making changes to this. And so our teachers have been phenomenal in um, just being flexible, um, they are all just so excited to welcome students onto campus that they're like, whatever it takes to do that safely, Melissa, we want to do. And so I really, really appreciate it. And like I shared earlier, our enrollment for the last 14 days has gone up and down every day. Like we'll get six kids and we'll have two unenroll and then we'll get two kids and then we'll have four unenroll. And it's like been this whole fluctuation. So What's kind of cool this year, I feel like, is we're going to have a really nice um, mixture of students who have been here for a long time, and we have a, a really healthy number of new students who are coming either returning to us or coming to our school for the first time, and that's fantastic. But because of that, and because of some, um, some changes in the number of staff, our, our certified teacher and staff positions that we have at our school this year, we did have a reduction in that. Um, I did have to make some blends and some configurations uh, that were needed to just keep those classes small and, and to allow students to have the, just the most uh, maximize their opportunity to interact with their teacher. Because uh, we have some big bubbles of classes and then we have some classes that are very small. So we kind of wanted to even that out across the range. So um, first and foremost in our lineup is Ms. Gunther. She is ready and energized to be back at school teaching a kindergarten first grade blend. What we did is our, our first grade class is, was pretty significant in size and we needed to make an adjustment. So uh, next in our lineup is Ms. Kapner. So Ms. Kapner is teaching a blend of first and second grade and Ms. Gunther's teaching a kindergarten first uh, blend. We pretty much just took the kinders and split them in half and, and half will be with Ms. Gunther, half will be with Ms. Kapner. And those teachers are both gonna be working together very closely to make sure that our students get the maximum best experience possible in grades K, one and two. Our lovely Miss True is, has decided that she can help me by going to third grade this year. She will be teaching our third grade students. She's, she's like, she's so awesome, but she's also so excited um, and flexible. And I just appreciate her so much. At fourth grade, we have Miss Burbank, who was at, who's a new staff member at our school last year and who is just um, as kind as can be. And she's excited to have fourth graders with her this year. 
And then at, for a fifth grade homeroom and middle school science, we have Mr. Feller. Now I was able to work a little bit of a config. I mean, if you know Mr. Feller, you know that he like science is his jam. And so I didn't wanna take away the opportunity for our older students to just have a really rich science experience with Mr. Feller. So what we've been able to do is that fifth graders will start their day with Mr. Feller and they will go throughout the morning and lunch, um, their class meeting, their morning classes and through lunch with Mr. Feller. And then when the fifth graders go to math and PE with Mr. Poole in the afternoon, Mr. Feller will teach our sixth and seventh, sixth, seventh and eighth graders their science classes. So it's really like the best of all worlds. He's a phenomenal homeroom teacher and a phenomenal science teacher. So it really is going to be a great combination. Um, I should have put these two, the next two staff members together. We've also, because of that reduced staffing that I talked about and the, um, the fluctuation of numbers, we have Miss Sears and Mr. Poole who will be um, teaching sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. And Ms. Sears is going to do what's called humanities. Um, I used to teach humanities as a middle school teacher. And basically that is the fancy way of saying um, language arts and social studies combined. And then, so they will spend part of their day with, with Ms. Sears, and then they will spend part of their day with Mr. Poole for uh, math and PE. And he, of course, is next in our all-star lineup. So again, Mr. Poole will be teaching um, and I actually said fifth, he's teaching fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, math and PE. And those groups are, have been, uh, we have our fifth grade cohort that is a large cohort that's staying together. And then we have our sixth and seventh graders who have been combined into two and kind of split evenly in the middle in um, two, six, six, seven, and seven, eight cohorts for the afternoons or for the, throughout the day. And they will stay and travel together as a group throughout the day. And then we have Mr. Lassier in um, our LRC supporting our students. And um, of course, you know, we'll have awesome Mrs. Galvez in the office. We have Mr. Bobby as our custodian. We're just really excited to be adding a couple new um, team members this week. We've just interviewed. And so, uh, and so we're just really excited to be able to offer this incredible staff to our students this year. So, Let's see, and, and many of our teachers, our, our information system was having a little glitch in it today, but I know that many of our teachers are gonna be reaching out in the next few days to families, either via Parent Square or in the mail or other things to kind of um, introduce themselves to you and to welcome your student to class. They're really excited for kids to come back, maybe almost excited as me, like I am so excited. So just a couple of little announcements. The first is that, um, I found out that we get to offer volleyball at Silvercrest, um, and I'm hoping this is right. Mr. Poole, is it correct that it's open to fifth graders, or is it just six, seven, eight? He can, he can go in the chat. Six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight? Yes. Okay, I will correct that. Six, seventh, and eighth graders. Fifth graders, you can be super excited for next year. Um, do you want to talk about it for a second, or you want me to just go through our slide? Sorry to put you on the spot and way to be flexible. It's the name of the game. Start. Okay. Um, yes, we're gonna start uh, next Wednesday on the 8th. Uh, I did send out an email to all the sixth through eighth grade parents that I had, and I think I've got everybody else's today. So if you didn't get an email from me yesterday, you'll get one tomorrow, it has all the forms uh, in it needed for participation. Uh, it's. Do not worry if you can't get all the forms by in by September 8th. <laughs> We've taken students two weeks into the, the season. Uh, we just want kids to play, but there are certain requirements as far as paperwork and physical um, insurance that have to take place before practice. Just communicate with me. And we are looking, we always need uh, volleyball referees. So if you were a volleyball player, let me know that too. <laughs> Would love to put you to work. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And if you have questions, I am going to encourage you to reach out to Mr. Poole directly because that's what I do when I have questions um, because he knows a little bit more than I do about how that works because he's been here longer than me. So thank you, Mr. Poole, for taking that on. I, I was telling him that I am really excited to hopefully be able to come down and 
and hang out a little bit in the gym with the kids because I used to coach volleyball as well. And it's, I miss it a lot. It was one of the best parts of my job. So um, I would, and I gladly ditch a meeting to come do some volleyball. I'll tell you that. So with kids. So I asked you all to mark your calendars to do a back to school meet and greet with us next week. And we are still working to pull that off. I will tell you with some of the health and safety restrictions and things and unavailability of some things, but where I was like, I am still having this. I really feel like it's important um, to give you an opportunity to come to school and to get to have a, a face-to-face -face interaction with our teachers. And while the weather is nice outside, I wanted to give that opportunity. Now we do have a couple staff members who have other engagements that evening that they might have to be excused from that. And that's because that's, they didn't know about it until I arrived, um, until we arrived back at school. But I um, am offering that as an opportunity as a true, like, I want you to think about open house in the true sense, like where it's a drop in, drop out, not, not drop out, but like you stop by and you make introductions, you can put a name to a face, you can introduce yourself, have a face-to-face -face interaction. We will have um, a table set up for families who need to pay either volleyball fees or the school supply fees. We, our boosters will be here um, with some Silver Crest swag and spirit wear available. We will have a representative here from the transportation department to answer questions or to help problem solve with you. Um, and we'll have just some light refreshments for families to enjoy. Um, it's going to run from 4.30 to 5.30 instead of a traditional open house that might happen a little bit later in the school year because we wanted to be able to do it while we can still welcome all of our families onto campus while we're outside safely. So um, I, I know that um, we would really love the chance for you to truly just stop by. It's not like it's 4.30 to 5.30, but it won't, that, that doesn't mean that you need to necessarily stay the entire time. We just wanted to leave a big enough window that families could stop by and say hello. And, and I'm sure that many of you are going to be excited to be able to say hello to your, to your teachers face-to-face -face after a long several months of not being able to do that. Um, we will be out on the back of the school and the, on the covered area or the paved area and the, and the field and the playground. And we just encourage you to stop by. I will have, I'll obviously send a little more information about that next week and a reminder, but I just wanted you to know that there is no formal presentation. There is no, it's just really an opportunity for us to get to informally check in with each other, say hello, celebrate the fact that we get to be back on campus with our students this fall and um, to do that in the most safe way where we can include as many people as possible. So um, we look forward to that and we look forward to you um, coming with your student that evening and dropping in for a while. Now, as I shared last week, I know that I do kind of a rapid fire um, presentation where I just share information like fast and furious. And I want to make sure that I give the opportunity to answer questions as well. Um, I will do my very best to give you an answer. But if you stump me like Oktoberfest dancing, I might need to come back to you with, a, with some answers in the future. But if you wanted to put a question in the chat, or if you wanted to unmute yourself and ask, or if you as always can always contact me at school and ask if you would rather do that. But I do wanna give people the opportunity to ask questions. And I think I can probably take it off of um, screen sharing. So are there any questions that I can answer right from the beginning? Did I do a good job? I must have like more than prepared you for, for the first day and the first week. Awesome. Well, if something comes to mind and you want to, you have a question and you want to ask me, I'm happy to answer. Um, I know I've said this a thousand times. I am so beyond thrilled to welcome students onto campus next week. Like, not only is it super exciting for me because it's the end of this time that we, I'm, you notice I don't use the P word and I don't use the C word because I'm, I'm really, it's a serious thing, but I'm so excited for us to kind of put some of those things behind us and be able to move forward. And I am so, so thrilled because not only do kids get to come back to school five days a week, 
but I get to be a part of a school again and an amazing school at Silvercrest. And I'm just super excited to get to welcome our students back to campus next week on Tuesday. I don't know who's gonna have a bigger smile next Tuesday, the teachers, the kids, or the parents. We'll find out, won't we? So any questions? Let's see, I don't see any more questions. Well, I must have done an A plus job. I appreciate you coming tonight. I will, this recording I will send out. I will send out the slides. Um, oh, thank you so much, Catherine. I appreciate it. I am so thrilled to be here too. I will also, I think we're just gonna continue to have Wednesday night powwows with each other, continuing to go forward just to make sure that we are checking in. Um, next week, I will kind of come back with some more information probably about technology and kind of how we're gonna do that. It's new to us and I know that um, we want to set our students up for success about, you know, communication and things like that. Um, if you have topics you want me to include, feel free to email me or call me or parent square me. And um, I'm happy to include those in our presentation. So, so thrilled to have all of you back with us and we will see you next week. Have a good night. <laughs>